Welcome back to INLA. Meet me at 3rd and Fairfax is a phrase locals have been using for years when making plans to meet at LA's original farmer's market. Come with me on an international eating tour as we celebrate the market's 75th anniversary and its first ever cookbook. It's like a tour of world eating. Truly, every, you can get any type of food here or cook it at home. Joanne Chanchuli has written LA's original farmer's market cookbook featuring recipes from 48 different food stalls here at 3rd and Fairfax. How did you come up with the idea to, to create this book? It just hit me and, and as I kept coming here and getting to learn about all the cast of characters that come here, I thought, gosh, this would make a really, really great book. Has there not been a book about this before? It's astounding, isn't it? Yeah. Joanne, what was here 75 years ago before the farmer's market? This property actually started as a dairy farm and the owners struck oil. Farmers would come and sell the produce out of the back of their trucks during the depression. And it grew and grew and grew until it became what it is today. Tell me about some of the places that have been here since the beginning. When you eat at McGee's Kitchen, you're actually sinking your teeth into a direct descendant of the first restaurant here. Blanche McGee is the one who noticed the farmers here on the corner and said, hey, uh, you guys hungry? I'm gonna, and started bringing ham sandwiches. And then the farmer's customers were like, hey, I want a ham sandwich. Now when you walk in here, you notice the big clock tower, but there's really a little story behind that. There is, it's actually not the original clock tower. The original clock tower from 1934 is over by Dupar's. It's much smaller. Is it true that James Dean had his last breakfast here? That's urban legend, actually, in 1955, oh, that James that Dean had his last breakfast oh, yeah. at Dupar's. Oh, Dupar's. They're, Dupar's, and they've been here since 1938, so they're they're close to being original. And their pancakes are delicious. I, I'm convinced they inject them with butter. <laughs> Hollywood legends have shopped here for years. Lauren Bacall actually still comes here. Uh, she uh, cannot live without McGee's nuts. They make homemade peanut butter and she buys her peanut butter here. Neapolitan pizza with a side of Singapore noodles, anyone? And what's so great about it is that you can assemble your own dinner. So let's say the kids want Chinese and your husband wants Italian and um, you want Mexican. You all can be satisfied because there's all those places here. One of the most popular Mexican places in LA is here at the farmer's market, Loteria. And it's Mexico City street food, little tacos, right. uh, the, the chilaquiles, which are to die for, and they're in the book. I mean, they are one of the most requested recipes. And how about all the meat you can eat? Papa's Grill here is one of the most popular, where you pay for your food by the pound. So you get a tray, and it's done like that in, in Brazil, although it's, it's food by the kilo. Okay, so where are we gonna eat first? I think we should have dessert first and head over to Little John's. Yeah. Cool, come on. Okay, this is Mike Grace, he's the candy maker here. Hi, Leslie. Hi, it smells so good in here. <laughs> what are you making? It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm making the chocolate fudge. This do-it-yourself recipe is in the cookbook. This is magnificent. You don't know how much I love chocolate. It's crazy good. But the toffee recipe is top secret. No, he would not give this one up. No, I <laughs> OK, we've had our chocolate. Where are we going next? I thought we tried the noodles at Singapore's Banana Leaf. So Leslie, this is Diana Gazelle. She's the owner here at Singapore's Banana Leaf. And she's going to show us the recipe in the book, which is the mee goreng noodles. Sorry. Right. We were young. OK. Uh, it's a good dish. One of our best sellers. Okay. There is a little bit of everything in there. Onions, spices, eggs, potatoes. A little bit of green chilies, if you like it. Some like it hot. Ooh, look at the little spice, that is so good. Okay, where are we now? We're at the famous Patsy's Pizza. It's the best New York style pizza in Los Angeles. You have to taste this. My father started this pizzeria in 1949. Uh, he started in New York and um, came over here and actually was, became really good friends with Frank Sinatra. And if Frank Sinatra likes your pizza, well then. <laughs> Filomena de Amore took over this family business in 1988 and still uses the original red brick oven. My father had this on Catalina Island in 1948, and it's all red brick inside. Whoa. Top, the sides, the bottom, and it bakes, bakes Neapolitan pizzas in five minutes. Oh, this looks so good. Let's try it. It's, mm. the, it's the perfect fold in half slice. Mm. 
That's good stuff. In a city where the past is often torn down to make way for change, 75 years later, the Los Angeles farmer's market has stood the test of time. I've been coming here since I'm a little girl. It's assimilated to modern Los Angeles, I think, but it's still kept its nostalgic charm. And I think the addition of the Grove in 2002 really brought a whole influx of shoppers and tourists and a new young vibe. But for longtime locals, the farmer's market is more than just a place to shop and eat. It's a way of life. You can come here when you're sad. You can come here when you're happy. It doesn't matter. It's like home.